That caregiver can possess up to 72 ounces of dry usable marijuana. If it weren't for the caregiver card, this person would likely be arrested and be heading to jail for, for the uh, delivery of, of, uh, of marijuana. But having that card, uh, this person slides into the exception and there isn't anything law enforcement can do. We know, based on the complaints that we receive, as well as um, things we, we've heard um, from patients, that uh, sometimes these caregivers that are running around, they're using the, the ones that are, and we're not talking about uh, people in the program legitimate. I'm not, we're not, everything here is not talking about any of the patients that are, that are in here uh, and trying to comply with the law. This is all geared towards those that are using, using the, uh, the act as cover for illicit uh, activity. So when we go back and look at this, if the, any one of these three patients is, is the one that we've been talking about that's being victimized by the caregiver or grower, this patient may not be getting hardly any marijuana, if at any, or they're being, even though it says may reimburse for costs associated with the growth site, that caregiver won't uh, or grower in some cases will not pass any of that marijuana to that patient without some payment in return or this patient may not even have hardly any kind of uh, uh, relationship with that caregiver so the caregivers out peddling dope and, and of course we have I'm going to show you a little bit of this but we've got a, a lot of examples of this if you had access if you had access to more information where if you had this caregiver and you were to talk to and you could find out who that patient was then you could confirm or deny whether or not this caregiver was uh, compliant with the act. Given this scenario here, this is an example of, of something law enforcement can't do anything about. And you can see on the left there some of the possession uh, amounts that we're talking about. When we only go to one site, you know, we don't know if the, other, if the grower or the patient has the 24 ounces or if all three of them do because remember combined they can only have 24 ounces amongst the three of them. Uh, this is an example of some of the limitations we're seeing, and, and this one, this example speaks to when they, when, it, when the patient gets a recommendation from the doctor to use medical marijuana. As soon as they submit that application to the health department, uh, they're now uh, they can possess marijuana legally and, and subject to those uh, possession limits that we're talking about. And it takes health department a period of time to process that application. Uh, and, what, and when law enforcement calls in. Uh, we're having numerous examples, numerous examples where we call and we get a negative hit that the person's not in the program, yet when we go have contact with them to find out that they are in the program. And one of the, one of the examples of where that's been a problem is when these applications are pending because it'll be, if you've got 2,000 plus applications sitting in the pile, health department's not checking that pile. So if they're in that list and we happen to uh, start an investigation where we're looking at someone on a grow during that period of time, we're going to get a negative hit and we're going to be moving forward as though it's an illicit operation. This is an example of one of those occurrences. Uh, August 2nd, uh, uh, we receive an anonymous tip regarding an elaborate uh, grow. Uh, the checks are done through health department uh, and at the, by, by resident and by address and, and we get a negative hit. So a search warrant is written. Uh, uh, and served. Uh, the, the door is keyed. Again, it's a dynamic forced entry. And uh, once we get there, we find out it's a compliant uh, medical marijuana grow. The, guy, the person has a caregiver card pending with health department. <clears throat> what this does when we allow this whole, if you say, in this period of window while a person's application is being confirmed as whether or not it's going to be approved or not, is that if we get that negative hit, we're going to move forward as though it's an unlawful grow, and we're going to treat it just like we do anything else. And if we're executing a search warrant, we already know that these these indoor grows and outdoor grows have been sub subjects of you know home invasions. There's been violence associated with them. These cartilers are already going to be on a little bit of high alert. Bad things can happen when we when we execute search warrants. So you're putting both the cardholder and law enforcement at risk when when we shouldn't be at risk. And and, and in a situation like this, there's probably lawsuits coming. You know, from this caregiver, and, prob and rightfully so, they weren't doing anything wrong. Uh, How did we? I don't understand why we didn't limit caregivers. Four caregivers. We had a grower can only grow for four patients. Now the bill says four caregivers. We would change it to four caregivers. And what you're saying is we have unlimited numbers of caregivers out there. Senator Morris, uh, what, what, what you have currently is a caregiver, a patient, a caregiver, and a person responsible for a growth site can't grow for more than four people. Yeah. All three. A caregiver is not 
uh, limited in the number of patients That's that they can have assigned to them. They wouldn't be able to grow for an unlimited number of people. They just they would only be able to grow for that's, four. That's what is in this bill. That's what we have currently. Well, the numbers don't seem to add up. There seem to be more caregivers than we need. There's a lot of caregivers. <laughs> And I, and I think that's one of the, the things that we're talking about. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no mechanism for oversight over whether a person gets designated a caregiver. And I'll, and I'll hit on this just a little bit more that's as, as we move I forward. I was trying to say, yes. Correct. Um, the other thing is we are attracting criminals from, from out of state that are coming to Oregon and, and using, um, and these are drug dealers, professional drug dealers that are coming here to use the act. And we've got a couple of examples of that. I, although we were not, we could flood you with examples if you, if you wanted them, but for purposes of the presentation, we've just picked out examples that will reflect the problem that we're trying to, to, to show you what we're seeing. This is a person here that was picked up on, uh, uh, he was a federal fugitive. He came here from Texas and uh, had uh, uh, federal arrest warrants for him for drug trafficking uh, methamphetamine. Uh, so he comes to Oregon and applies to Oregon, and he gets a card. He's picked up on the federal warrant, has 92 plants in possession, and he's legal with, in regards to the Oregon medical marijuana. And the reason he's legal is there's a provision in, from 1085 that makes it unlawful for an Oregon participant to be either a caregiver or a grower if they've been convicted of a you know, Schedule One or Schedule II uh, uh, a, or, a or B felony for manufacture or delivery. That doesn't apply to anybody outside the state of Oregon. So anybody that comes here with any of those types of criminal backgrounds can get a card, uh, whereas if you're an Oregonian, you can't. Of course, everybody, the patients can get the cards regardless. They're just limited to the ounce if they've got those convictions. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, does this bill address that? Uh, Chair Morissette, uh, Senator Anderson, uh, uh, not 380 does not address that in its current form. And do we have legislation that will address that? Uh, yes, if I may, Mr. Chair, Senator yeah. Anderson, uh, okay. one of the bills that our committee is introducing today will address that specific issue. And it is something that um, the District Attorneys Association and law enforcement requested in 2007, and I think in an effort to see where 1085 was going to take us, uh, there was a decision made to hold off on that. But we have introduced that in our bill. Thank you. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Where is your bill right now? I understand that Senator Morris has a number of bills that I don't know anything about, which makes it kind of frustrating. If we're dealing with a comprehensive medical marijuana bill and there are other bills floating around, it makes it very difficult. Mr. Chair, the only um, information that I have is that my understanding is, and forgive me if I don't have all the information, that the bills have to be filed by noon today and that they are going to be filed by noon today. And I apologize that I do not ha have the, the answer to the second part of your question. Um, okay. Uh, this next example is, a, is another example of an out-of-state person, uh, and in this particular, that, that came here and, and had uh, 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 drug warrants from another state, it just happens to be Texas again, and this person was in violation, had 69 plants, 53 seedlings, and what this person had done is uh, come to Oregon, uh, got a false name under an Oregon ID card, and then submitted his applications, and the only reason we found out about him is when he was arrested for being out of compliance with the act, and we did his finger prints, we were able to figure out who he was. In this particular case, there isn't anything we can do with this person in terms of health department, no matter what law we pass. This is just a further example of what we wanted to show of someone from out of state coming in to take advantage of the act for illicit uh, activity. Now, this drug trafficker uh, was using the OMMA as a, as a front. Uh, and, and what he's holding in his right hand there is a, a, a wad of an uh, undisclosed amount of, of currency. Uh, in October of 06, he was found to be in possession of 12 pounds, uh, told uh, police he was a patient and a caregiver, so he could legally possess three pounds, a pound and a half for each one of those cards. Uh, as the law was, at the, uh, as it is now, is we can only seize the excess, so we took the nine pounds. Uh, he was left with the three. While that case is continuing, he continues to on with his drug dealing, and over the next three months, law enforcement is buying marijuana from him, uh, which results in a search warrant. 
uh, that's executed as residence where, again, he's in excess both in quantity of u- dry usable marijuana and the plants. And, and, and of course, this is a poly drug guy. Uh, we also ended up with some methamphetamine. Uh, 